the overall assessment is not very positive, I would say. Um, a lot of this uh, institutional development uh, has been done uh, in a very top-down manner by states which are, in many cases, semi-authoritarian states. And therefore, the kind of uh, participatory management and transfer of responsibility that we find is not very developed, I would say. But in many regions of the world where uh, participatory, participatory irrigation management and water user associations have been introduced, they've not always been successful no, anyway. No, I would say that's, that's confirmed the quite bleak overall uh, situation. Uh, of these uh, yes, institutional development activities. Uh, it's even more, I would say, uh, again, because of kind of political culture in the region we've been looking at, it's even more clear. So what are the problems, uh, particularly in, in the Middle East? Well, I would say the, most of these um, uh, programs of transferring uh, responsibilities have been driven by um, an intent to shift cost on to users rather than really sharing responsibilities. This was a driving force, especially in Central Asia, uh, of these programs. Uh, therefore, I mean, when you transfer only costs, they, you can understand people are not very excited about the, the programs of the reforms uh, itself. This is one of the, I would say, uh, reason. The second is much of this also is pushed by donors, so uh, reforms are uh, nicely packaged in a rhetoric of participation, but in some countries like Egypt or Morocco, for example, it, it's quite clear that the state remains uh, strongly in power and has, it's the state is not a homogeneous thing, but has, I would say, overall a limited uh, really interest in uh, opening too much, if you want, uh, distribution of power and responsibility. Yeah. Did you find any cases where WUAs were actually working? Um, there are cases, I, I was just uh, referring to large-scale irrigation schemes, and it's clear we have to defi de divide between these public schemes where these institutions are set up and the smaller uh, organizations that are set up often by development project to take care of one particular intervention. So for this uh, second kind of water association, many uh, are built upon existing, you know, uh, social already organization. And so some of them are successful in dealing with the, the new projects or the new intervention. Some of them are uh, successful in expanding their activities, but even that, that, that are really uh, rare uh, cases. So this is where maybe we can find some, I uh, would say, more successful uh, organization. In terms of going back to these big systems, um, it's, it's, it's very hard, you know, even to say where and what is successful. And one of the reasons is that uh, most of the literature is very impressionistic is done by people who are linked, basically, people from the ministries, people from uh, ed agencies, people from uh, uh, the projects themselves, development projects that are just, you know, uh, telling uh, what they've been doing. But that doesn't amount to uh, something that you can really use to assess what is working. And most of this literature just written during the project or just after and again, by the people that are, uh, you know, linked to the project. So we found a, an incredible lack of uh, in-depth, long-term studies uh, through which we could really um, assess the, the changes, which are institutional changes, so very qualitative, you know, in terms of um, change in behavior, change in responsibilities and accountabilities, and these things are hard to, to measure, and again, very little of the literature on hand uh, uh, allows us to really, uh, yeah. So, state management of water doesn't work very well. Community management of water doesn't work very well. What is the answer? Well, yeah, that's a, that's a difficult question. I mean, in, I still believe that uh, having, a, a, if you want, a, a distributing a little bit the responsibilities and managing this interface between users and and managers has the potential for improving. But it's not happening again in part because the irrigation agencies are reluctant to relinquish their, their power. 
Uh, it's also not happening because many of the systems are not in a in good state, if you want. And if you want to improve management, turn it sort of more volumetric, more, you know, uh, raise the certainty of supply, you need to have the hydraulic devices that allow you to measure and, and, and this is, most of the system are deteriorated, not everywhere, like I think Morocco and, and in Tunisia are systems which work well technically, but they lack water, so anyway, they cannot deliver as much water as people would like. But uh, in many cases, these systems are hard also to... So this is one of the, of the practical reasons why the agencies are also reluctant to commit to a more accountable, if you want, management, because it takes more effort, but also more means. And uh, I mean, the Nile Delta is a good example of difficult system to manage because it's 40,000 kilometers of canals. And you have this big mass of water that comes down and you have to really, you know, divert it down to the plot level. And that's certainly not easy to do uh, with, uh, uh, you know, an environment of canals that are getting silted, clogged up, and that you need to clean and large all that. So, I mean, the, the, that's not easy also. So that's also another reason why um, improving the, uh, the certainty of supply is, is not easy. So more investment, more transparency, these are the keys? Uh, in certain system, yes. Uh, and I think that's also apparent in the, um, in the management transfers that most of the time there is uh, a refurbishment uh, of, the, of the system before you transfer. There has been cases in Central Asia where people have transferred the system as it is and obviously that cannot work. So there are other examples where uh, the donors have uh, done the rehabilitation like in Azerbaijan and then that's proving more successful uh, but yeah it's again limited to particular project and when you want to do that at large scale then you have obviously a, a financial issue and in Egypt in particular some of the um, earlier uh, institutional development programs faced the difficulty that the system had to be improved and then the state say, well, we don't have money to do that. So that's uh, one of the reasons also. Mm -hmm.